As the saying goes, there's no I in team, and there's no I in DXB today, as far as I can figure out. Right, let's see what's coming up tonight. We're going to be talking about five team building activities that you can experience in the UAE to make your team a better team. We're going to be catching up with the team behind an award winning team building company based right here in the UAE. Looking forward to all of that and much, much more. So keep it locked here for the next hour or so. Uh, ever been on a team building adventure? I have. I have. I wanted to throw in the word unfortunately, but I, d I don't know how that's going to make the rest of the episode go. No, but I have been on team building activities and it's one of those things where at the start you're like, oh, we have to go and do this. But it's actually a lot of fun. And even though some of the stuff you do is silly, I do find that at the end of it, you are a stronger team. So it does work. Um, this will come as no surprise to you, gentlemen. Um, I used to work for a team building company. I used did. to be that person. I used to be the culture manager for my company. I was the one that did organised fun for my company. Yeah, you're right. That comes as absolutely <laughs> no surprise whatsoever to any of us. I wouldn't um, be surprised if you said you were a mall Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. What I do find surprising, though, is the changing face of team building because, uh, you know, you say team building and I'm thinking, here's three pieces of wood build a bridge or yep. whatever. Mm. Um, it's moved on since then, like many things uh, in the world. Uh, and it's going to be interesting today to see our variety of guests who are talking about the fact that they've got adventure races, obstacle courses. Uh, there's, there's, the, there's the VR side of it, so tech coming into play yeah. as well, mindfulness. But I've still got this thing that can you really do team building in the office? Surely you've got to get out of the office. But, but, I mean, personally speaking, no. Yeah, I would say get out of the office as well. Anything to get you out of the office and just doing something different, like even, like you said, the assault course ones, just something that's out and away from it. Because if you're in the office, I think you're constantly thinking about work. I'm a lot happier with whatever team I'm in if there's an office pizza party. And I don't think I'm the only one. <laughs> that's all you're worried about. That's all I want. Who it's cares about pizza company party, culture? It brings everyone in the company together, even people who always take the time off. Um, and if you're lucky enough, I know that some people do go traveling exactly to do so team building. if you have the that's budget the right you can do it these incentives but I mean that's some big corporate cash you got to be talking about to send your team abroad listen I used to go I used to play sport back in the day cricket and there is a <laughs> cricket where <laughs> there is uh, yeah a bit of cricket and other bits and pieces and when you used to go on a lot of rugby tours at school and things like that there's an old, there's an old, you know team building yeah on tour but there is a saying on tour you know what goes on tour stays on yes. tour um, and think people are just a little bit more relaxed. Yes. Out and about on tour and and, and, and away. Is that good for team building or bam? No, a bit of everything. But I also think that there is a, and I hopefully we're going to de delve deeper into that in tonight's show in terms of there's team building, just having a bit of fun, getting people away from the office. And there's actual kind of deliverables. What can you learn on your team building outside of the office that then is relatable back in mm. the corporate world, as it were, you know? So. Guys, I'm looking forward to teaching you all about team building no, today. We can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to be educated by Katie. <laughs> Fun, eh? Uh, yeah. All right, we are. Uh, right, looking forward to that one. Also looking forward to doing this, not uh, just with the team here. In fact, we're going to expand the team. Let's find out who today's guest co-host is. What's up, everyone? My name is Alicia Tillman. I'm a mindfulness and movement specialist. I cannot wait to join you guys later in the studio. Yes, Alicia will join us right here in a few minutes. But before that, here are five team building activities we recommend you check out right here in Dubai. Take a look at this. Team building activities are a great way to bring co-workers closer and encourage teamwork. The goal is to enhance communication and ultimately boost productivity levels in the workplace. Here are five team building activities in Dubai that you and your office mates can try. Lego isn't just for kids and workplace wellness advocate Marita Harold uses one of the world's most popular toys to strengthen relationships between employees. The idea is that building blocks together also forges connections between people benefiting the workplace. Escape rooms are an excellent tool for team building. Faced with a series of puzzles within a time constraint, team members must communicate effectively to achieve a shared goal, to get out as a group before time runs out. The experience naturally promotes group thinking and fosters trust. Check out DXB Today's Ahmed trying to escape from no way out. Work can sometimes be stressful, but there's a place in Dubai where employees can 
collectively let off some steam. The Smash Room. Khaled tried it and gives it the thumbs up. As a team, participants can unite in smashing items like old appliances, electronics and glass, feeling rejuvenated afterwards. Situated within Mushroof Park, Aventura is an excellent venue for employee bonding. Participants are encouraged to support each other as they navigate circuit-style obstacles and zip lines, all set against the backdrop of a forest filled with gaff trees. Improv, short for improvisation, involves creating and performing spontaneously without a script. It's an effective icebreaker among co-workers, enhancing listening skills and fostering team trust. Ahmed had the memorable time at the Courtyard Playhouse and even made a few new friends. Blaine Redman's voice was very calming then, wasn't it? Uh, Loved it very much. Right, our guest co-host today is a mindfulness and movement specialist, a certified professional trainer, a Lululemon ambassador, and so much more. I can't wait to find out more. Please welcome to the show, Alicia Tillman. Alicia, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, it's a pleasure. Just even your energy is calming and I feel mindful being Thank around you. you. Thank you. I've worked hard for that. Yeah, good. Tell me how you got into it and why it's such a passion of yours. Um, I played basketball most of my life. Okay. Um, after I got two knee injuries and realized that that's not my path in life anymore, I uh, had a lot of my friends that were still playing professional or still collegiate and I started doing a lot of yoga just off a whim, I start to really enjoy what was happening mentally and then the physical stuff was what I kind of went for, the mental stuff was a byproduct and it changed my whole life and I thought that I needed to tell my friends back at home what this is like and one day I was like, I think I'm gonna do this for the rest of my life and then I started to teach yoga, meditation and mindfulness to pretty much NFL, NBA, collegiate basketball players and football players no um, back at home. That's amazing. Just the fact that you've gone, and I find it interesting you've gone from like this athlete, which is high powered and everything, yeah. and then moved into it. So how does that then work then in the UAE? We don't have the NBA, we don't have the NFL. So yes. who are you working with here? Well, during the off season, so when, when there's nothing, when there's no sports on TV and we're all just staring into oblivion, um, I started using my tactics that I was doing to team build and to create mindfulness and spaces to people that were CEOs and more corporate teams that were at high levels, um, staffs of the actual team, so the coaching staff and different things like that because a lot of those skills are very transferable because you're still, whether you have a ball, whether you're on a field, whether you're a court, you're in an office, you still have to depend on each other, you still have to find that level of trust and be able to move. Um, and so like David Beckham, he could kick a a sideline, but if nobody's there to hit it, nobody's there to catch it, then he's just kicking a bunch of balls. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, true, so true. what do you think sets this type of sport team building apart from, say, building a bridge like Tom mentioned earlier? Because a bridge, um, sadly, can be done by the AI. <laughs> That's true. And it's an emotional, it's a, it's much more goes into it because everybody is their own human. They're having their own human experience and everything and they take things differently, personal. They t some people are a little more sensitive and especially in male sports, it's very fun to see the variety of uh, different types of personalities that people have. And so when you come from this sports space, because we all know there's an objective, there's a goal, it's very clear. Even though the same is in corporate, but it's a little bit different because people here, they know the level they have to get it done at is a little bit more high, where it's, we, we gotta win the championship, we have to all step together, we all have to do this, or, cause your cameras are on, lights are on, you're gonna play in front of thousands or millions of people, mm. and if you don't take that home, one, you have a whole city that hates you, and <laughs> then, you know, but in the corporate setting, they don't really take teams as, as seriously. But if we think about what most championship teams have in common, whether it's whatever sport that it is, it's their synergy they have between them. But that's the, uh, that, that's the one I don't find, and I don't know what the sort of, the, the magic ingredient is here, because, you know, a lot of 
athlete, whatever their sport, mm -hmm. in order to get to that level as you, collegiate or even higher, etc., mm -hmm. you've got to have that little element of selfishness to get to where you are. 100%. So how do you find that? And yet you hear about, you know, the real teams coming together, the Bulls are back, of the, back in the day, etc., mm -hmm. um, and, and, and creating that selfishness, bring it all together as one, to be as, and think as a team. How do you do that from the sort of selfish individual that you need to get to the top of your game yes. to melting as a team? So I can say it's going to take sacrifice. And it's going to let people know the difference between a Kobe, who is himself Kobe Bryant and everything that he stands for, versus somebody that plays the same position, that may be able to have almost the same set of skills, but cannot get the, the weakest person on the team on the same page. Yeah. I can make sure you may not have the same level of experience and the level of talent. For example, LeBron. LeBron, if you ever looked at basketball, he sucked outside <laughs> of when he when it was LeBron just him. LeBron's actually a big fan of the show. Uh, so. you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But, you know, he got to the playoffs multiple times and lost because he wasn't building the team around him. And then he had to make a decision of, do I want championships or do I want to be the best team on, plus player on the team? And that is a lot of teams that have to do that when you have that star player. Mm -hmm. You have those people. Do we all now bow down to you? That's not really team building. Mm -hmm. That's just the, that's a dictatorship almost. Or, and, and then everybody starts to play into that. Mm -hmm. But when you have those real leaders that come down are willing to, let me sacrifice myself. Let nice. me take this. Let me, let me take something off your plate. I'm going to put this. Let me develop you in those ways and bring you into that. That's going to be the difference of championship teams than people that are just amazing athletes, but then cannot build the support. They don't have the buy-in from the team. Mm. And you can tell, you can tell, you've all seen it when you have stars and the they're like, they can, yeah. and they can't, they couldn't win themselves out of like so an air hockey match against five-year-olds. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Don't talk to me about air hockey. Me and my nephews have got an ongoing battle. Anyway, um, moving um, away from NBA, back to the UAE, you just did an incredible event at the Theatre of Digital Art. Yes. Tell us about that. Look at your face, even that. It You're was so cool. excited. Tell me. It was so cool. So it was like a 360 immersion. So there was screens on the ceiling, screens on the front, the sides and everything. And pretty much I, I led people through a meditation, a breath work and meditation. And it was great because you, you wanted to keep your eyes. So most people think meditation is closing the eyes, getting away from the senses. Okay, yeah. But this was taking you through a journey. And what I was able to do is match uh, tons of huge digital, pretty much, um, visions of whether it's forest, whether it's water, and be able to correlate different types of breath work to be able to get you through that. Oh. I mean, so it, it, was... looks, it looked incredible. It sounds amazing. Um, Alicia, you're sticking around for the whole show. You are yes. our guest co-host today. We, yes. So we're going to chat much more a little bit later. But for now, we are after the break. We're going to be catching up with an award-winning team building company. Plus, a bright, shining star is waiting to perform right here in the DXD Today studio. So don't go anywhere.